Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of the fireplace makeover. If you guys happen to miss my last video, I will have it linked down below and I will share a little um, recap on that in just a moment. But I did want to say that today's video is going to be building cabinets and bookcases. So a while ago, I told you guys that I really wanted to you know, have bookcases on either side of my fireplace. I really wanted to have a space to decorate. So that's what I will be tackling in today's video. This is a long one, so brace yourself. There's so much footage to go through. I have over three hours of footage to break down, but there's so much I want to share with you that I don't want to leave out. So grab you a snack, hang out with me for a little bit, and we'll get right into it. All right, quick little 10 second recap. My husband and I took down the TV, he added a recep, and I went in with some texture and textured the entire fireplace. That video will be linked down below if you wanna check that one out first. All right, my first step was going to Lowe's to gather up materials. So this first shopping trip, I only got enough stuff to build one cabinet and one bookcase. The reason for this was because, to be honest, I didn't know if I was gonna be able to do it, so I started small and I figured if it worked out, I'll come back and grab the rest of the materials. Um, at Lowe's, unfortunately, their big saw was down, so they could not cut down plywood for me. So that's why I ended up using these spruce pine pre-cut boards. Um, and it ended up working out perfectly. So I'm happy I ended up using these. They were easier to carry and to deal with than big sheets of plywood. Here's the first one that I'm starting with. These will be my side panels for my, uh, not my bookcase, uh, what are these? The cabinet. So I'm using two of them for the sides of the cabinet and then one of them I'm cutting in half and making it for the top and bottom. You'll see what I'm talking about when I start getting everything put together. But the first step was just kind of measuring everything out, figuring out where I needed to make my cuts. And as you can see, my saw is not quite big enough to cut this piece of wood. So I cut as much as I could, flipped it over, and cut the other half. Now that I have my first board cut and I know the height that I want for my cabinet, I am going to bring these in here and kind of just space them out to kind of get an idea of how wide I need the cabinet to be. So I just <laughs> set them in place and then used my tape measure and did the best guess I could possibly come up with that was going to give me the width that I needed for my cabinet. Like I said, these cabinets are both custom. I ended up having to do this because our fireplace is not completely center like my husband and I originally thought it was, it's a little off, like a couple inches, it's like two inches off. So one cabinet is two inches smaller than the other. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the piece that's gonna go on the bottom and top of my cabinet. So I'm basically making a box is, you know, basically your plan starting out. So I am measuring this out. I'm also using my square to make sure all of the lines are nice and straight. And I am double measuring as well. Always measure twice, cut once. <laughs> I've learned my lesson a few times, but this time I did so good because I did do that. I always tried to remember, always double check, always double check so that way you're not wasting wood. It saves you more money that way as well. I cannot tell you how many times I have wasted wood just from accidentally cutting wrong. So always take that little extra minute and double measure everything. Once I got the frame pretty much cut for my first cabinet, I am going in with my Craig jig. I just purchased this and y'all, I am obsessed. I cannot believe I did not buy one sooner and I, I'm kind of kicking myself in the butt for not getting the better one, but I really wasn't sure how to use it so I thought stick with the cheaper one first and then go back and get the better one if you like it. And I love it. Definitely want to get another one. Um, but this makes you those pocket holes. So it makes your project so much more sturdy and professional looking. So here I'm just taking my clamp and clamping this in place and using the little kit that it came with for the little drill here, the drill bit, um, and you drill it out, and then it came with a drill bit for the screws as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just work on putting all my pocket holes in place. Always make sure that you're paying attention to which side your pocket holes are on because you don't wanna accidentally flip your board over and have pocket holes on both sides, you know what I mean? You want all your pocket holes on the same side of wood. 
um, I almost messed up twice because <laughs> I was like moving too fast and I kept trying to flip the board over and I'm like, no, 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 no. You're just going to turn the board and put the pocket holes on the other side. Once all the pocket holes are in place and you put your other board up against it, this is how it will look and you'll add your um, Craig jig screws right into the side and you could wood fill this and completely hide those pocket holes all together. Um, or in my case, I what I did was I attached them and then flipped it up to where the only way you're gonna see those holes is if you climb into the cabinet and look up at the top, which no one's really gonna do that. So I didn't worry about wood filling these just because no one's gonna see them. All right, it's time to assemble the first cabinet. So what I did here was I took some Gorilla Wood Glue, applied that along the edge, and then I'm gonna get my side panel of my cabinet up, and I'm gonna use the screws that actually came with my Craig Jig um, kit that I bought. I'm just using those up real quick, so I just added my screw right in, and that was it. I got my first cabinet somewhat put together. It's so exciting. <laughs> I can't believe I was so intimidated to do this. And I think the main reason I was so intimidated is because when you think about all the measurements and all the cuts and all the things you have to do, it, it can be really intimidating. But if you try to take all of the pieces of wood out of it, the actual assembly part is really not hard at all. And I think you could do this too. And I will say, I did use as many minimal tools as possible. I did recently just get a sliding miter saw for Christmas. My husband bought me that. Um, but other than that, um, you could literally just have Lowe's or Home Depot cut your wood for you. And the pocket holes themselves are pretty simple. You just need a drill. Um, so you don't have to have a ton of tools to make this happen. I think that's another part that was like really intimidating to me is like, how can you build furniture if you don't have all the proper tools? You just got to make it work. <laughs> but as you can see here, my first cabinet is starting to kind of take shape. Um, what I'm going to do now after getting these in place is flip it completely over and have the Craig or Craig jig holes or pocket holes both facing the bottom so you don't see them. So when I add the bottom of my cabinet together, you'll see that I'm kind of laying it on its side so that way I can make sure that those holes are not facing up. Once I got the frame built, at this point I'm going to go ahead and add some bracing to the back side of the cabinet. Um, so I'm taking a 1x4 and cutting this down to size and I will be using my Craig jig to add the pocket holes and I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the back side of the cabinet. At this point, my first cabinet is made. I was so proud. I went ahead and added a super thin piece of plywood to the back of this one, um, and then later changed my design plan, so this will be removed, but I wanted to include it because this was part of the process. Um, I had extra little pieces of thin plywood, so I cut them down. They weren't quite big enough, but I made it work, and that is one of the reasons why I ended up pulling it off because I was like, I'm not gonna half butt this today. I'm gonna make this as professional looking as possible. So like I said, later on I did remove it and kind of just start from scratch. The next step was figuring out how tall I wanted my bookshelves um, and I was trying to account for trim at the top and trim at the bottom. <laughs> and you know those happy accidents that happen, that's kind of how this worked out. I was just trying to eyeball it 
I know, probably not the most professional thing to do, but it all worked out in the end. It all came together. So my first cut on these boards, these are six foot boards, by the way, um, I cut them at 58 inches. So each, my book case itself is 58 inches tall. So when it sits on top of the cabinet, it obviously makes it taller, but you got to account for the trim at the bottom and top, like I said. So I was trying to give myself some room. I figured worst case scenario, I'll add an additional like half an inch or inch piece of trim if I need to, but thankfully it all worked out. So my next couple cuts are all about the bookcase at this point. Back to Lowe's again to grab the rest of the material to build the second cabinet and the second bookshelf. At this point, I was on a roll. I knew exactly what I needed and I knew what to do. And so the second one was done in about an hour and a half, which is crazy considering the first one took me like six hours. <laughs> But once you get started and you kind of get an idea of what you're doing, it makes it so much easier. And I know how intimidating it is to start a project like this, but just know that if I can do it, you can do it too. Now, this next video clip, I was trying to explain the wood that I got for the cabinet and the bookshelves. However, I kept messing up the sizing here, so I just cut the audio out. Um, like I said, a list of my materials will be down below in the description box bunch of random stuff some stained gloves wood putty nothing crazy speaking of stain on this little chart they said that dark walnut um, stained on white pine or light yellow pine gives like the perfect color so I'm about to test it out and see because my plan is to put like this wood backing on the back side to have stain so let's test it and see how it looks so this color was way too dark for what I wanted, so this was a no-go. I ended up creating my own stain, which I will share later on. Now getting back to the second cabinet build. At this point, I'm going to speed things up pretty quick because we kind of get the point with the cabinets. You're just cutting, measuring, figuring out what your size is, adding your pocket holes, putting everything together using wood screw or the pocket hole screws and wood glue and boom your cabinet is done so once we're done with that then we're going to move on to the build of the bookshelves which is actually extremely easy we were young and we were free and running never bothered about what could be coming every day we danced and life was smiling we were young and drunk and Just love in every glass I'm drinking. We're like one and without you I'm sinking. I'm always shining next to you. All right, so at this point, both of my top and bottom boards have the Craig holes here, as you can see. Um, there's more on the side as well. So this is my top and bottom. And then these are the sideboards. 
And what I did was I started with one like this, and then I put these on the side and then drilled this way and then flip it over once I'm done. But you show me life is full of faces Sometimes clouds got in our favorite places But we were young and unaware Oh, I got you, there's no reason to Chasing payment on my own Cause you're here to stay every night After both cabinets were built, it's time to move on to the bookshelves. Like I said, this was the easiest part because these are all like pretty easy cuts. Um, first, you're going to cut your length, so each board that's going to be on the side, and then you're going to cut your middle and bottom piece if you're just building a bookshelf. In my case, I'm putting my bookshelf on top of a cabinet, so I did not use a bottom board. My bookcase will be screwed right into the top of the cabinet. You'll see what I'm talking about in a few minutes, but... Um, here I'm just marking out where I need to cut everything and I'm going to start getting all these boards cut and put together. Under the palm trees in the California sun Sand underneath our feet, the morning's just begun. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the bookshelf that I just made on top of my cabinet and I'm going to use two inch wood screws into the pocket holes to attach the bookshelf to the bottom cabinet. Remember much from the night before, just from the human touch. Now I want more. So keep in mind that wood naturally has a little bit of bend. It's not going to be 100% perfect. So when you are attaching everything together, you're definitely going to have to hold it tight with your hands or with clamps. Um, I really couldn't figure out how to clamp this together with the clamps that I had. They're just not big enough to go from the bottom of the cabinet all the way to the top. So I just did the best I could to squeeze it together with my hands and then screw at the same time. It would have been much easier had I waited till my husband got home, but that's just not how I work. I'm like, I'm going to get it all done by myself type of person. <laughs> Ask for help later. Um, but I did. I got it. It just took a little bit of time. After my husband got home, he helped me out using the skill saw. I've told y'all before, I'm a little nervous using the skill saw. I had like an almost accident happen and I'm just, I'm just not a fan. So I had him help me cut those long panels because those are going to go on the back side of my bookshelf. Um, that way I can stain them and the back side will have a beautiful stained look. So that's kind of like what I was going for. But while he was working on that, I worked on adding my shelves. I decided to attach these using the pocket holes because I don't really want my bookshelves to move um, I want them to all be like stationary and you know with the perfect even space so I cut myself a guide and I'm gonna go ahead and attach these in between I 
like no one else even really scratches the surface cuz nobody gets nobody gets nobody gets I'm looking for faith looking for love in every direction I'm looking for someone to show me the way when my map is gone up give me a Oh maybe battery died well my battery died <laughs> but I freaking built these cabinets I'm so darn excited I cannot believe I built these the back still has to go on and I gotta attach them and all the things but it's looking good hey y'all today I'm working on staining the backing boards that are gonna go behind the bookcases I am stuck between two colors and uh, this is like a DIY stain um, and I can't decide which one. There's one that's a little bit more on the warmer side and then there's one that's a little bit on the cooler side and I love both but I have to make a decision <laughs> like now. Um, let me show you. Okay, so here are the options. This side is just a warm tone or actually it's kind of like a, it's a little bit on the cool, I don't know. I'm liking this one. For this one, what I did was I did a gray stain first and then went over it with this color. So it gave like a, a very warm, deeper t um, color. And I think that's the color. I think that's what I want to do. It's very close to that piece of board that I purchased. I'm going to practice one more time. <laughs> I feel like it, the more practice you do, the better. Um, Oh, I don't know. Oh, it's so nerve wracking. Okay, but these are my two colors. Basically, these are just acrylic paints watered down. So I have a dark, almost black, and then I have a dark brown. Um, on this one, I just used the brown, so this one. This one, I used this color first, as you can see, and then I topped it using this one. And that's kind of the color I am liking. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go for it. I'm just gonna do it. So I am gonna do this inside because it is super cold outside today. So I'm just gonna lay it on my table. Um, this is acrylic paint, so it comes right off if it gets on anything. So I'm not too worried. Let's see. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. <laughs> oh man. I'm so Okay, so I do have a few different old towels on hand. Um, I got my two paints here, which this one needs to be stirred up.
One more to do. This one's a lot bigger too. Oh man. What are you doing? <laughs> you need to get down. Not now. Before you break something. Get down. All right, y'all, so I'm getting closer, closer and closer to the finish line here. Um, I did decide before putting the backing on, I am gonna paint. Um, I'm just gonna do like around the backing, you know, pretty good. There's still some areas I'll have to fill and things like that, but I wanna go ahead and paint so I can get the backing on and then I can attach it to the wall. But I don't wanna attach the backing to the cabinet and then risk getting black paint all over it because I am painting them black. I'm so nervous. <laughs> but I love the way the front door looks black, so I think it'll just kind of bring that black tone over here. I just recently painted the Kitchen Island bottom half. It's almost black, but I am gonna be painting it black. Um, yeah, so hopefully it turns out. Are you listening to me? She's listening to me. She just got in trouble, didn't you? She jumped off the couch, off the back of the couch, onto here, knocked over my Sprite, and it went everywhere. <laughs> it sure did. Look, she's like, I don't care. I'm just, huh. I, no, 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 no. You're not going outside to chase the birds, no. But I am. All right, so I ended up getting the Sherwin Williams Ovation Plus. I love this paint. I've used it so many times and it's always been a, a great paint. I love it. Um, it is a paint and primer mix and I feel like it does just what it says it does. It primes and it paints and it works great. <laughs> so I'm gonna use it. I got an eggshell finish in the color Tricorn Black. So it's almost matte, but not quite a matte finish, so that way it's easy to clean. Um, I did end up getting a few different things. I'm gonna try this one because it says it's for cabinets, furnitures, doors, and more. And I like that it has like this spray finish. I also got some paint brushes. I needed a new angled brush for like corners and stuff. So I got that as well. Okay, so I'm first off going in with a stain blocking bonding primer and sealer. It says extreme adhesion, drives in, dry, drives, <laughs> dries in 30 minutes. It's an interior and exterior. So let's see what happens. 
All right, y'all, so I'm going to be your guinea pig. I actually painted one cabinet with the primer, and I did one without the primer just to see the difference. I'm painting the whole cabinet black, so really, coverage is not really an issue in this case, and let me tell you, the primer was a waste of money. <laughs> if you're painting something black, I, like, you know, I'm no professional or anything like that, but I would just skip the primer. It really was a waste of my time. Everything adhered the same and I have the same look on both and one had primer and one didn't. All right, y'all. <clears throat> so I started painting the cabinet, um, or I mean the bookcase. The only reason why I'm painting it now and just getting like that first coat on, especially like on the back sides, is because I need to attach the backing but I don't want to attach that until I at least get the good majority of the inside of the painting done so I don't have to worry about messing up this board here. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, it doesn't make much sense, but before I can secure it to the wall, I need to put that backing on first. Hope that makes sense. Um, so that's why I'm painting it. I'm trying to let go of this heartache It's been following me around It wakes me up, it shoots me down At this point I would rather be numb I'm sick and tired of emotions They've never done me any good Just tore me up into bits I wish I knew Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and attach the back of, hold on, I gotta get some sandpaper. Okay, it's time to attach the back to this. So I got my nail gun, and here's the back. It should be fairly easy. You're a big helper. Thank you, sir. It's hard, ain't it? That's a lot of painting. You're doing so good, though. Thank you for helping, mommy.
next day I wanted to start adding some trim to kind of thicken it up a little bit and you can tell I already started to like play around with decor yeah we'll have to wait to see that though because I will be doing a whole decorate with me using items I have um, once everything is finished I'm nowhere near done though at this point I still had to add a bottom piece to lift the bookcases up also add the trim at the top there's still a lot that needs to be done but to, right now I'm actually going to focus on trimming out the actual bookcase itself to make it a little bit thicker so on the sides I'm using one by twos and on the top I'm using a one by four After getting the trim done that day, I took the weekend off. This has been a big project. So um, I started back up yesterday by building the doors. Now these are not just any cabinet door. I wanted to make the window pane type of doors with plexiglass because I just love the way that looks. I wanted it to play nicely off my front door as well. And I thought this would give like a really pretty custom look. So I just did my absolute best. <laughs> I took the boards outside, I started cutting for the length that I needed and the width and just kind of replicated that for each cabinet door, made sure that they were not too wide and I kind of went back and forth inside to make sure they would fit. Once I got the hang of it, I added my pocket holes and started attaching everything together and believe it or not, they actually came out pretty darn good for my first set. Now, I will say I should have practiced with the other side first, and I'm kind of bummed that I didn't because I should have practiced with this, like the corner cabinet, you know, it's not that noticeable. Um, but I started with the main cabinet that's on the left-hand side, and once I did the second set of doors, I got better. So it's just one of those things where practice makes, you know, progress type of thing. Come around, don't I? And I know sometimes I'm bringing you down, but I always make you smile, don't I? Mm -hmm. We're like the waves on a big blue storm, you see. But still, you're the one who brings out the best in me.
This is awesome. Are they the same length though? Oh, what the heck happened? <laughs> They're a little off, it looks like. Might have. What can we do? Are you going to be able to tell? They're barely off. I'm gonna make it work. I'm gonna make it work. I'm gonna make it work. Cool. Okay, so now I'm just gonna put the frame in the inside. Or should I do? So I wanted to point out I did not fill the pocket holes at this point. I can always go back in and fill them later, but at this point I'm ready to just get the cabinet done. So I am going to go ahead and add my plexiglass. These are super easy to take on and off because I used mirror clips to attach my plexiglass. I don't have a router, so this was the best option that was affordable. So I opened up the plexiglass. I did cut this, by the way, myself. I bought a $16 sheet and just cut it in half for each of the doors. Um, and I'm adding that here and then using those mirror clips to attach it in place. In the next video, I will be sharing with you attaching the doors in place, adding the hardware for the, uh, for the doors, also adding the finishing trim along the top and bottom of each of the bookcases, and I'll also be finishing up painting the fireplace. So stay tuned for that video. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate you being here for part two of this makeover. Hopefully you decide to stick around to see the rest, and I will see all of you in my next video. Bye, y'all.